Thank you for his presence. God has us just where he wants us today. With a promise that will give us all new life. Come with me now to the first book of Moses called Genesis. Genesis, Genesis. Genesis. Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 through 2. And now we stand out of reverence for God's holy word. And listen now for the word of the Lord. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Won't you pray with him for me now? Almighty God, as I stand before your people, I think. I thank you. I thank you for restoring my strength. I thank you. For your people, I thank you. For giving me the desires of my heart. And now, Lord, I ask that you would allow the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart yes. be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, for, for you are my strength. Yes, you are. And you are my redeemer. Okay. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I pray. Let the church say amen. amen. Now smile at somebody. Amen. And turn to somebody. And say life. Life. In the series. Of new Life is a series of new beginnings. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Genesis is the first book of the Holy Bible. The word Genesis means beginnings or origins, and it is in the book of Genesis that we learn about the character and the personality of the God that we serve. Yes. It's the beginning of the world and of human history and of family and of civilization and of salvation. Genesis is the story of God's purposes for creation. And as we look at this book, the beginning, we, we get a picture of the entire Bible, New and Old Testament. Because the entire Bible reveals the nature of the God that we serve. Look at your neighbor and say, you need to know more about God. <laughs> Just going to say, we spent too much time trying to know about people we need to know more about, about God. God is the creator. God is the sustainer. God is the judge. God is the redeemer. The book of Genesis is the book of beginning. And the word this morning says, in the beginning, God. 
And I came to tell you this morning that your life, your whole life can be a series of new beginnings, no matter your age. Age is a phenomenon that we deal with too much because God doesn't really deal with age like that. Many of the prophets he called were late, late, late in life. Somebody say amen. He said the children would praise him. Oh God, you, we live longer now. We live longer. So I mean, if you still do the same thing you've always done, what you gonna do with the rest of your life? <laughs>
new birth, before new blessings. My life has filled with new stuff. All my life. Is it because I'm secure? Oh no. In fact, I have many, many insecurities. But I work on them. Yes. Is it because I'm brave? Ah. Mm -hmm. I have many fears, but I work on them. And what did I work on? Well, something new came into my life. And I had the holy boldness, the naivete, and the curiosity to say yes to most of the new beginnings. I found new birth every time, new knowledge every time, new people every time, new blessings yes. Yes. every time. You don't know what you miss. You don't walk through a door that was open to you and you didn't open it. You don't know what you miss when God asks you to do something that you never ever done before and have no confidence in yourself to do it, but you say yes. Amen. All the things you can learn. I look back on my life and I've gone through so many doors that were just came to me that I didn't expect but I was just nosy and curious enough to walk through the door anyway and believe the people on the other side who saw something in me that I didn't see in myself. Amen. 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 Say, new beginning. New beginning. People who didn't fear to do new things or to start all over or to venture out. God did not us a spirit of fear. Amen. I told you before, one of my great fears was high. One of my great oh, I, oh, oh, oh. I, I had to go into convulsion when I had to go up a mountain. See, I, I hadn't been around a lot of mountains. And where, where did God tell me to come? California. <laughs> oh, California. I promise God, God, wherever you tell me to preach your word, that word will travel. Yeah. And there was a whole period of time when God called me to the mountains. Yeah. Ooh, Jesus. Open the doors. You never thought. Open oh, working in television. I never worked in television. The vice president comes to my little cubicle and said, I want you to come to market. I said, I don't know nothing about marketing. I know nothing about marketing. He said, All the people I've hired have a degree in marketing and they can't do marketing. But I see something in you. I'll teach you all I know, he said. What did I do? I went into marketing and let him teach me all that he knew, including sitting behind the desk at the window, being the first African American woman to ever work in marketing, and PBS with the Wall Street Journal on my desk and my legs crossed me. Look at that. Oh, so when I got a call, 
to go teach at Oxford University in London, England. And people were coming down. I thought, oh my God, what is going on in my life? And they say, did she go? So did she go? I went. <laughs> For two years, I went. Because you never know who's looking at you. You never know where God wants to take you. Unless with your fears and your insecurities and everything, you get out and you go. Look at your neighbor and say, get up! You yeah. go because the beginning offer us a wonderful opportunity to get reacquainted with God and even more powerful ways than we have gone before. Our spirit is open to God when we are just starting something new. It works you. It, it, it sends you into, oh Lord, I can't do this, and God said, God, you just where I want you, because I can. Your mind is just waiting for something new, new instruction. I love learning. I love new things. I really get bored with the same old thing. As you can see, my hair. I get bored with the same old thing. <laughs> you too, ho. <huh? laughs> my spiritual daughter. She's just like me. Y'all don't never know her going to be on a Sunday morning. It just depends on how we feel. <laughs> I was the oldest one in there. He had a lot of new things. I love learning new things. You can't ever think that you know everything and grow in life. Oh, God. Your pastor is one listening when you're getting ready to do something new. New things push us because most of us would rather stay in our comfort zones. Too many people like to get stuck. And what is for me or you? I wore my hair like this all my life. I, I didn't wear the same clothes like this. All. Some people ain't changed since high school. And all that person, they retired now. They look the same. Just a little more weight, but they look the same. Glory to God, help me out. And the other day, Father God, help me now. Help me with the people today. Help me, help me. Um, some people are just lazy or scared, insecure, worried about what other people will say. You need to go to a new thing. Sometimes just start off, start off slow. Go, go a new way. From church today, just go a new way. No, don't go that same old way. Just start practicing a little. Um, just get a new hairstyle. Don't, well, if you don't want to, you know, mess with your own hair, just try wig. Just try something new. <laughs> try something new. Some <laughs> I mean, of y'all don't need to go to the map station. Go at the mall, at the mall. Just, just let them do your face. That's all I'm saying.
my weight down for a few years now for the first time in my life. But now I got to start something new. So I'm gonna pick which diet plan. Cause I done tried most of them. <laughs> Remember this, beloved. The word says, in the beginning, God. Yes. There was no other God before God. God was in the beginning. God is the author of new beginnings because God is present in all new beginnings, new starts, new experiences. There was a unique way of knowing God that no other experience will give us. And I want more of God. That's my new journey now, to be more spiritual. And so I spend time reading books up until, up until all times of the morning. That's, that's my new thing in my life to focus on not being pink spirituality. But I told God I want to be purple. I want to go deeper in Him. That takes some work. No. Beginnings in God. Look at your name and say, Don't be afraid to start all over. Don't be afraid to start all over again. Therefore, the first principle to live in a blessed life is this you must know something about God. I mean, you must know something about God. In the beginning, God shows us in the fullness of His being. In the beginning, God demonstrates His authority. And his power. You must know God. You know, when we really knew God for who God was, we get excited about God. We get so excited about God. People go and want to talk about Superman, Wonder Woman, and all these aliens and all that. They don't know God. Nobody's more exciting than, than God. Listen to this. 
Remember when Jesus came, he didn't start his ministry with the great multitudes either. He started with 12. Look at your name and say, you have to start somewhere. You have to start somewhere. You can't start with everything. You can't start when everything's in place. You have to start with just a little. Look at somebody and say, make it happen. So hear this. Jesus picked 12 disciples of Paul's. And they were a messy 12. Because they were human beings. All of us are messy. Because we human beings. All of us are a little tilted. Because we human beings. He couldn't find 12 Jesuses. Think like you have a lot. 
I can remember my mother always teaching us. She was so creative. Towards the beginning, she was a dressmaker and a designer, and she'd say, take what you have and make what you want. We are created in the image of God, and God is a creator. God wants you to be a creative thinker. You can walk around with nothing and have big thoughts. James Mother Johnson, the poet, says in his poem of creation, with his head and his hands, God thought and thought to be thought. I'll make me a man. Now let's get this straight. That's what God said. See, y'all be thinking, I'll make me a man. No, you won't. <laughs> <laughs> Men don't want to be made anyway. Men want to be accepted for who they are. You don't have to be made in a man over. You know, women, we got that problem. It's God's job. God thought and thought and thought to his head. How make me a man? Look at your neighbor and say, Let God create you a man.
And some of us, the sin is just staying the way we always were. The God I serve never leaves us the way we always were. There are not many things in life that you can be sure of, except rain comes from the sky.
His opportunities never just be available. For new hands. And if you find yourself in a mess, yes. don't stay. I mean, you can try working for a minute. But God say, live in the past. Give the Lord a hand for his people. 